Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regiment to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Zen 5, that's right, Zen 5, AMD are skipping Zen 4, and we're going to instead be seeing the fifth iteration of the Zen Micro Architecture. Then we'll move over to Ice Lake SP, which is going to be the future generation of the Xeon Micro Processor Architecture from Intel. But once again, and we'll start things out with Zen 5, and this has been confirmed just 10 days before Zen Plus finally hits the market. So, of course, we'll be seeing the 2000 series finally available for purchase, at least officially. But AMD, unsurprisingly, are not willing to just say, hey, that's it. We already knew that Zen 2 and Zen 3 have already been confirmed. That's been official, of course, by the company, and they are going to be based upon 7NM. Zen 5, we know fewer details about but it is, at least according to the slides at the end of this video, an official internal code name. It will, of course, be based upon x86 uh, Zen microarchitecture, but there are a couple of questions. The first of which is, well, why are they skipping Zen 4? Well, the most likely reason is not because of Zen Plus existing. After all, we already have Zen 2 and Zen 3, so that doesn't make any sense. Instead, it's possibly due to the fact that, well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is that it's unlikely, sorry, the, the first and most likely is that four is typically considered an unlucky number in Chinese culture. It's also possible that perhaps because it is an internal code name, and this is pure speculation upon my part, perhaps because it is just an internal code name, maybe they didn't feel that Zen 4 when they were designing it was enough of an iterative step over Zen 3 and perhaps that's why they decided to scrap it. But what of course we do know is that Zen 3, that is you know the last uh, chip that we actually knew about before this, is not going to be released until 2020. So most likely Zen 5 is not going to hit any store shelves until 2021, 2022, something along those lines. What's it going to be based upon? What node? What type of performance? <clears throat> Unfortunately, we can only speculate. It is interesting, however, that AMD have already officially confirmed this. I've got a couple of suspicions why. The first is obviously branding and publicity. After all, the whole purpose of this PR video was for basically saying, hey, look, Zen is like a year old now, and it is. They're essentially releasing uh, the Zen Plus architecture a year after the original Zen debuted. And the second reason and who can blame them, is it's really good from the standpoint of like investors and data centers and any large scale uh, customers to know that, you know what, if you buy into us, if you buy into our uh, ecosystem, you're not just, we've not just got plans for the next couple of years, we've got plans for multiple years, multiple different SKUs down the line. And that is of course, extremely important. Anyway, next piece of news, and this one is going to be more along the lines of the data center and high-end computing, and that is Intel's 10NM Ice Lake Xeon processors, as well as some platform details have been um, emerged onto the internet. And this is thanks to the Power Stamp Alliance, although it was spotted by Anantec, and we have some key details here. Now, the first is that Cascade Lake SP is officially not launched. I mean, it's not available yet at all, but Ice Lake SP is going to be the first 10nm Xeon processor, a Xeon family processor, and it will be hitting the market between 2018 and 2019. And we can see that there are definitely some crucial differences between this particular CPU and the previous one. The first is that TDP has gone up the wazoo. It's now up to 230 watts. And also we're going to be looking at LGA4189. So in terms of socket, this thing is actually actually gargantuan in comparison, and it uses more pins, in fact, than even the Threadripper or Epic parts, just so we're into some kind of understanding how huge this is. Now, compa now compare this to the Skylake SP Xeons. They range between 140 and 205 watts, and Cascade Lake is slightly higher. The TDP there is 165 to 205 watts. So why exactly is this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. I mean, obviously the core count and clock speed are one and possibly the implementation of Omnipath as well. So it's possible that this could also be a big reason as well as Intel firmly embracing FPGA as well. 
So in terms of the overall Xeon lineup, we're going to be looking at at least three specific different, uh, I guess you could say, families or SKUs. There's Skylake SP, Cascade, there's Cascade Lake, excuse me, SP, and finally Ice Lake SP. And there will be some similar power implementation and compatibility there, but it will be utilizing an adapter. So that doesn't necessarily mean that a CPU will work across uh, different platforms, but it looks like we're going to be seeing substantial improvements when it comes to memory. So to give you an idea, according to this, the Isolate SP parts are rated for high current and can run two CPUs. This is, once again, assuming it's a Skylake uh, sorry, Ice Lake SP with up to 16, I'm just going to repeat that, 16 DDR4 memory slots. So just think about that. You've got 16 slots dedicated to each CPU. And so that means you've got octa-channel memory support, which is absolutely insane. We're not too sure yet on memory clock speeds, but Cascade Lake itself offers support for 2933 DDR4 memory. So this means that we should see at least, at least in theory, one terabyte of maximum memory, which is absolutely insanity. Now, what type of launch date and what type of time frame are we going to be looking at for more details? Well, at least according to the Power Stamp Alliance, we'll be seeing more details over the next month or two. And supposedly, Intel are planning to unveil these details around May, which is, by the way, during the Open Compute Summit. So it's going to be very, very, very interesting. So we don't know the number of cores yet. We don't know the maximum number of threads. Just for clarification's sake, the Cascade Lake SP as well as the Skylake uh, SP both had 32 and 64. That's for the core count and the thread count respectively. They both uh, offered the same amount of level 3 cache. That's 38.5 megabytes. But memory support um, went up considerably because with the Cascade Lake... Uh, we saw an improvement of memory clock speed from 266, 2666 from uh, Skylake up to 2933, but it's still six channel. But once again, Ice Lake, um, we don't know the um, exact details completely, but what we do know is it will be supporting eight channels. Memory speeds are still a little ambiguous at the moment. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Once again, I'm recording this on my cell phone, just in case you missed the previous video. I am still in Seattle, and I know I keep saying this in every video, but I'm going to otherwise get like a bunch of comments from someone who's missed the previous video. So I am in Seattle, I am recording on my cell phone, but uh, A, I don't like to leave Amy to do all the work because I think that's most unfair, and B, honestly, I'm kind of getting a bit antsy to not, well, do some work, so I kind of miss you all as well, so... You know, occasionally I do want to play our videos just, you know, to say, hi, here's Paul. Anyway, with all of that said, internet hugs, everyone. Bye for now.